Hey guys, it's Crazy Kajibi here for the James Bond Show. No fears, limits, or substitutes. And I'm back today to talk about Bond 25 and a whole bunch of different little things that I'd like to discuss. Today's episode is brought to you by Butthurt It's Your Self Affairs. Okay guys, so what are we going to talk about today? So, filming of Bond 25 is taking place at Pinewood Studios. Chris Brock, a unit production manager, has put out a notice to the surrounding neighbours to let them know that loud gunfire is going to be happening. So this, of course, is happening in the wake of Daniel Craig hurting his ankle. Now, he is about to be operated on. Um, he'll probably be out for a week, and then from there, there's a two-week recuperation period for him, so he should be back in around three weeks time to film. So obviously Bond 25 is going to keep rolling on. All the rumours and the garbage about their stopping filming is complete crap. Films allow for these things so they're obviously shooting big gun shootouts um, which Daniel Craig isn't needed in. So I think that's exciting. I'm really excited about that especially when it's said on the notice that was put out by this unit production manager named Chris Brock that there's going to be loud gunfire and explosions. So they're doing that inside the studio. I'm happy for it. It's all taking place in the Stanley Kubrick building or Stanley Kubrick studio as well. Now, guys, something I wanted to touch on. There's been theories about Ana de Armas, who her character is. You know, is she going to be only in scenes in Europe? Would she be filming scenes in Jamaica? And that's why apparently they needed the intimacy coordinator. Bullshit! <coughs> Um, <laughs> to help Daniel Craig and Anna get their love on. I think it's crazy. I think that is so woke. And you know what? Eon have got to be really careful about this because this sort of stuff just spreads out to the community and to the Bond community, which is made up mostly of misogynist fans. People that like, well, not so much misogynist fans, but people that love James Bond to be that sexist, misogynist dinosaur. I mean, come on. When M said that back in 1995 and still in viewings today, how many people were like, yeah, you said it, because that's our Bond, and that's how we want James Bond to be. So anyway, Ana de Armas, I find this whole thing interesting, because apparently she did film scenes in Jamaica. Now, there's been also a leaked photo, and when you try to have a look at this photo, check it out on Real James Bond Fans Would Love Facebook page, guys, because I'll be face I'll be putting that photo there on our Facebook page, Real James Bond Fans Would Love. Also, the notification um, by Chris Brock, the production manager, that is also at Real James Bond Fans Would Love. So check it out. So yeah, I'm trying to work out who her character is because if Bond is in retirement with Madeline Swan, why? Is he having sex scenes with Anna Diamas' character? That doesn't make sense to me. So, another theory of mine is, I've kind of got a theory thinking that he's not actually with Dr. Doll. Oh, sorry, Dr. Madeline Swan. Dr. Doll. <coughs> Maybe he's not actually with her. Now, also, some people and some James Bond pages on Facebook, you know, have been so, oh, it's a remake of Honor Majesty's Secret Service, and she's going to be killed in it. No, this film is not a remake of Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Just because if Madeline was to die in the film, how does it make it a reboot or a reimagining of Honor Majesty's Secret Service? There's Felix Leiter. He wasn't in Honor Majesty's Secret Service. As far as we know, Blofeld is not the lead villain. It's going to be Rami Malek's character, and it just makes no sense for him to be pl playing Blofeld. Since when was James Bond retired? Since when, when was James Bond in Jamaica? So these things just don't make sense to me. Just if they kill her off, so what? That doesn't make it an Honor Majesty's Secret Service remake at all. I think also the filmmakers are going to be a lot more intelligent here. My personal opinion is, especially with Phoebe waller feminazi on board writing the script, I don't think they're going to kill off. Oh, you can't kill her off. She's female. Now, I bet you any money, and this is my theory, and I said this a while ago, I believe they're going to kill Felix Leiter off. It's the last thing with Bond. It's wrapping up the Daniel Craig year, or last thing with Daniel Craig, last film with Craig, wrapping it up. 
they've got to have emotional stakes. Now, if they're going to have emotional stakes, they're not going to kill off Swan. Now, also, if Bond is having sex scenes with Anna Diamas' character, at what timeline is he doing that? Because if that's going on in Jamaica, then when does Madeline die? So I actually don't think they're kind of together anymore. That's my theory. I, I think maybe they're not going to be married or ma not married in retirement or she's going to leave him. Something like that. I don't think it's going to be as predictable as her getting, you know, whacked by Blofeld. Um, I just can't see it happening. So that's kind of my theory on that bit as well. And of course, we wish Daniel Craig well too. We hope he gets better and we wish him a full recovery. And um, maybe when he gets back to full health, he can stop whinging uh, about playing James Bond and actually embrace it, enjoy it, since it's going to be his last film. Guys, that's what I've got for this episode. Please, if you like this and you want to hear more from the James Bond show where you hear real stuff and before i go to guys other than saying can you like and subscribe that'd be awesome before i go i just want to say that um yeah okay it's the james bond community and we're all fans and all that that's fine but it doesn't mean we have to agree all the time and also just because we've got a youtube channel it doesn't mean we have to think that we've got to be so beautiful and nice and gift all our words to Eon Productions and be too afraid to have the guts to say what we really think and what also needs to be said. So when reviewers are doing, you know, who should be the next James Bond video and then they come to Idris Elba and they pass over it and go, oh, well, you know, or oh, he's a little bit old now, you know, he's a bit old, so... And then that's it, and they skip forward. James Bond Radio. And then they don't want to discuss that. They don't want to discuss the fact he's black. And Calvin Dyson, I find him very entertaining. And he, yeah, he, some of his videos are great. But he did a James Bond video, a video of who should be the next Bond, and he got to Idris Elba as a controversial choice. A little bit later on, he said, oh, I don't want to go near controversial areas. Well, mate, you need to. We need to have balls and guts to defend what Ian Fleming created. And Calvin Dyson also said, and this is just in his video, which I'll link, he also said maybe 10 years ago Idris could have played James Bond. No, Calvin. Moore started at 46, Dalton at 41, Brosnan at 42, and they were all white British. If, you're, if you turn around and say, oh, he could have started when he was 10 years older, you are then saying Idris Elba could be James Bond. Idris Elba cannot be James Bond. It is a role for a white actor. As much as Chadwick Boseman is Black Panther and Blade is played by a black actor, James Bond, the, the legacy of Bond has to be restored. And don't think that by having an honest opinion, guys, and saying what you know is right, what should be right, is going to stop you from getting your premiere tickets or your little sponsors or certain James Bond people coming on your radio shows. Have some balls, have some guts, and defend James Bond. I've been Crazy Kajibi, keeping it real here. Until next time, guys, keep on bonding.